What if I told you... I'm listening. ...about the secret origin... Now you're talking my language. ...of a common breakfast cereal. Wait, you're losing me? Cornflakes. <sighs> red pill or blue pill? Well... Well, obviously I'm taking the red pill. Sick. Cornflakes. A bold choice in name for a breakfast cereal originally made from wheat. Actually, there's a lot of bold choices in why this breakfast cereal came about in the first place. In fact, what if I told you that cornflakes may be the only breakfast cereal in existence that was designed to not taste good, and that the cornflakes of today are actually the exact opposite of what they were designed to be? It actually created irreconcilable rift between brothers Will Keith Kellogg and John Harvey Kellogg. Because according to John Kellogg, cornflakes were never supposed to escape the outside walls of being fed to patients of a Michigan sanitarium until his brother Will had a better idea. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, John Kellogg was the director of the Battle Creek Sanitarium. And unlike what the name sounds like, it was actually considered to be a premier health resort for its time, attracting celebrities among the likes of Thomas Edison, President Taft, and even Henry Ford. The San, as the hipsters of the time called it, brought to the table revolutionary medical treatments like bathing, breathing, sitting outside in the sun. Man, we've come a long ways. But one thing that was very important to John Kellogg was bland, easy-to-digest whole foods, Bland for a whole host of medical reasons, as well as John Kellogg's personal reasons, like the fact that removing meat and having a bland diet has anaphrodisiac properties, but the rest we won't get into. Seriously, from eugenics to racism to abuse, there's a lot of reasons why he wasn't such a good dude. I mean, he was even excommunicated from the church. From the church, John! Anyways, legend has it that John and Will left some cooked wheat to sit out and rest. Then, they got pulled away by some important business at the sanitarium. When they finally arrived back, it had already begun to stale. Since it wasn't too far gone and money was tight, they decided to process it through the rollers anyways. To their surprise, instead of flattening out into strips, the wheat flaked off into tiny chips, making what was similar to the signature flake design cornflakes have to this day. John Kellogg decided that it would be an excellent opportunity to ruin breakfast... I mean, make a bland, tasteless, notoriously difficult to eat, but super healthy breakfast option for the Battle Creek patients. And this went on for a period of time until his younger brother Will got a much better idea. Will wanted to market the flakes outside of the sanitarium. John opposed that idea. Will also wanted to mass produce them and turn it into a viable business venture. John also opposed that idea. Will then thought it would be a much better idea to add in some sugar so they would actually be palatable. John really opposed that idea. So then, Will had the idea that John sell the rights to the flakes to him, and they separate ways so he could pursue the business on his own. And John, of course, wait, wait, John was actually cool with that one. And that idea really worked out for Will, and exploded Battle Creek Toasted Cornflake Company into the Kellogg cereal brand that still exists to this day. Will got his way and added boatloads of sugar, swapped out the wheat for corn, and made some corny marketing gimmicks like their signature green rooster named, of course, Corny, and John, well, John lost a lawsuit and the right to use his own name. That's what you get, John. It's all because you didn't smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. <laughs>